that this too, too solid flesh would melt. Thaw and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self slaughter. And unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fie on Ah, oh, fie. That it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much. Not two. So excellent a king that was to this Hyperion to a satyr, so loving to my mother that he might not but team the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth, must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on and yet within a month. Let me not think on Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, why she, even she, oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month, ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married. Oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart. For I must hold my tongue. It's angels and missiles of great defense. Be thou a spirit of hell, or goblin damned. Bring with the airs from heaven, or Blasts from hell. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet. King. Father, royal Dane, oh, answer me. Mark me. Speak, I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge. But thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires to the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spears. But this eternal blazing must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, oh list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, oh God. revenge is foul and the most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. It is given out that sleeping in my orchard 
A serpent stung me. But know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. No, not the fact so. My uncle. I, that incestuous, that adultery beast, with witchcraft of his wits, with traitorous gifts. Oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce. One to his shameful lust. The will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard. Upon my secure hour thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven and a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, and with a sudden vigor it doth posset and curd, like eager droppings into milk, the thin and wholesome blood, and a most instant tetter barked about, most lazar-like with vile and loathsome crust, all my smooth body. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched. Oh, horrible! Oh, horrible! Most horrible! If thou hast nature in thee, damn it not! Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the matter to be near. Adieu. 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 Remember me. instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee. I, thou poor ghost, whilst memory holds a seat in this distracted glow. Remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory I'll wipe away all trivial, fond record, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter, yes, by heaven. Oh, villain! Villain, smiling, damn it, villain, I'll bend it! My table's meat it is, I set it down that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. Yeah, but wild and whirling words, my lord. I've heard the guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. I'll have the players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. <laughs> if he do blench, I know my course. The spirit I have seen may be a devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite. That ever I was born to set it right.
Doubt thou the stars are fire, doubt that the sun doth move, doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh dear Ophelia, that I love thee best, oh most best, believe it, adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him. Hamlet. To me. Or not to be. That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles by opposing Adam. To die, to sleep no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks the flesh is heir to. Is a consummation to be to be wished? <coughs> the sleeper chance to dream by there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. I, there's a respect that makes calamity of so long life for who would bear the whips and scorps of time? The presser's wrong, the proud man consciously, the, the, the pangs of despised love, the law to lay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of our worthy takes what he himself might his quaves make with a bare bodkin. <sighs> Who would fardels bear the grunt? and sweat under a weary life, but that the fear of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, it puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprise of great pitch and moment. With this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Gracious, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. Read on this book. That show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. What's up to you now? I feel a feeling. Nymph and thy orisons be all my sins remember. Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did, and with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost. Take these again, for to the noble mind rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. Fair, my lord. <laughs> Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be both honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. 
Can beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly. For the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bawd than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. This was some time a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. <laughs> I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. <gasps> no wisdom more to see. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, and yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious with more offenses of my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them scope or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are arrant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? Home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell. Oh, help me, sweet heavens. If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Or if thou must needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery go, and quickly too, farewell. Heavenly powers, restore him. I have heard of your paintings too well enough. God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, and amble, and you lisp, and nickname God's creatures, and make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to, I'll have no more it. It hath made me mad. I say, we will have no more marriage. Those that are married already, all but one, shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery, go! Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounce it to you, trippingly, on the top. Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword, the glass of fashion, and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite, down. And I, of ladies most deject and wretched now see that noble and most sovereign reason blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love, his affections do not that way tend. There's something in his soul over which his melancholy sits on brood. And I do doubt the hatch and disclose of it will be some danger. Let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him. I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, and find him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unwatched go. Black. Hands. 
apt. Drugs fit. And time agreeing. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my lines, nor do not saw the air too much with your hands thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. <clears throat> Thoughts black, hands out, drugs fit, and time. Oh, be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action with this special observance that you are step not the modesty of nature for things so overdone are from the purpose of playing whose end both at the first and now was and is to hold as twere the mirror up to nature i warn you your honor go make you ready observe my uncle give him heedful not Play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Ah! How does our cousin Hamlet? Excellent, if they <laughs> are the chameleon's dish. I eat the air. Promise crammed. I have nothing but this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. <laughs> no, nor mine now. <laughs> Lights! Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. Oh, did you think I meant country matters? Think nothing, my lord. Oh, that's a fair thought, to lie to a maid's life. What is, my lord? Nothing. Madam, how like you this play? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. No, oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in it? No! Oh, no, they do but jest. Poison in jest, no offense at all. What do you call this play? The Mousetrap. You shall see anon, tis but a knavish piece of work, but what of that? Your majesty and we that have free souls, it touches us not. Ah, this is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. Leave thy damnable faces and begin. Come, the croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit, and time agree. Confederate season, else no creature seeing. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected, with Hecate's band thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property on wholesome life usurp immediately. Poisons him in the garden for his estate. We shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. I'm frightened with false fire. Affairs, my lord. Give all the play. Give me some light. Give me some light! Oh, good 
you all. I'll take the ghost word for a thousand pounds. Just proceed. Very well, my lord. On the talk of the poisoning. Just very well, my lord. <laughs> Mother. Mother. Mother! You'll come straight. Look, you lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear. And that your grace hath screamed and stood between much heat and him. Now silence me even here. Pray you, be round with him. I warrant you, fear me not. Withdraw, I hear him coming. O oh, heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. No, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? Why, what's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rude not self. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And, would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay. Then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come, sit you down. You shall not march. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me, Hal? How? But how, oh, Hal? I'm now a rat. Dead for a duck and death. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, lady, twas my word. Oh. A wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better, take thy fortune. Leave wringing of your hands, peace, and sit you down. Let me wring your heart, for so I shall, as even made of penetrable stuff. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Look you upon this picture, and on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated in this brow. Hyperion's curls the front of Jove himself, an eye like Mars to threaten and command. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. This is your husband. Have you eyes? Have you eyes? What judgment would step from this to this, eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, ears without hands, or eyes smelling, sons all, oh shame, where is thy blush? Rebellious hell. Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnst my eyes into my very soul, and there I see such grained spots as will not leave their ting. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an encemid bed, Stewed in corruption, honeying and making love o'er the nasty sty. Oh, speak to me no more. These words like daggers enter in my ears. Oh, sweet Hamlet, no more. A murderer and a villain, a slave that is not twentieth part the tithe of your precedent lord, a vice of kings. Oh, no more. A king of shreds and patches. Save me and hover over the rings of heavenly guards. Come on, would your gracious figure? Yes, he is mad. Do not forget. This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. But look, amazement on thy mother sits. Go step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? Alas, housed with you, that you do bend your eye on vacancy and 
with the incorporal air do hold discourse. Oh, sweet son, whereon do you look? On him, on him, look you how pale he glares. Do not look upon me, lest with this piteous action you convert my stern effect to tears, perchance for blood. Oh, gentle son, to whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? No, nothing at all. Yet all that is, I see. No, did you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Why, look, 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 his hair how it steals away my father in his habit as he lived. Look where it goes even now. This is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation, ecstasy, is very cunning in. Ecstasy. My pulse, as yours, doth temperately keep time and makes as healthful music. It is not madness that I have uttered mother. For love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul that not your trespass but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past, avoid what is to come. Oh, Hamlet. That has cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part and let the purer with the other half. Good night, mother. But go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For this same Lord, I do repent. But heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this and this with me that I must be their scourge and minister. So again, good night. I will bestow him and will answer well the death I gave him. I must be cruel, only to be kind. Thus, bad begins, and worse remains behind. Good night, mother. My head must
in youth when I did love, did love, oh, me thought it was very sweet to contract the time for my behold. Oh, me thought it was nothing a meat. Whoa! Ah. This fellow no feeling of his business that he sings and grave me. Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Ah, and age and his stealing steps have clawed me in his clutch and shipped me into the land as if I had never been sucked. Ah. That skull had a tongue in it. I could sing once. Look how the knave jowls it to the ground as if for Cain's jawbone that did the first murder. Whose grave's this, Thera? Mine, sir. <laughs> I think it be thine, for thou liest in. What man dost thou dig it for? For no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Well, who's to be buried in? For one that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> How absolute the knave is. How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Well, oh, if he not be rotten before he die, uh, uh, eight year or nine year, uh, yeah, ten or a ten or a, a ten or a less, yeah, nine year. Why he more than another? His, uh, he's been tanned in uh, his trade and keep the water out for a good long time for your water is a is a is sore decayer of your of your horse and dead body oh. here's a skull that's has been here in the earth for uh, three and twenty year a horse and mad fellow it was <laughs> a pestilence on, on your mad robe sir <laughs> this sir this skull this skull, sir, was, sir. <sighs> yeah. Yorick, the king's jester. Horror. Let me see. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. <coughs> I, uh, I knew him, Horatio. Fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath bore me on his back a thousand times. He hung those lips I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your songs? Flashes of merriment that were want to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chapfallen. For the Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked to this fashion at the earth? Even so. And smelt so. Ah. Even so, my lord. What base uses we may return, Horatio. Why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it Stopping a bunghole. Alexander died. Alexander was buried. Alexander returneth to dust. The dust is earth. Of earth we make loam. And why of that loam whereto he was converted, might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that the earth which kept the world in awe might Touch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. <laughs> softer, softer while it comes the king. The queen. Who is that that follows them and with such name it right? No. Silence is the loudest sound.
lay her at the earth. And from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. Sweets to the sweet, farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, not have strewed thy grave. Hold off the earth a while until I have caught her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust upon the quick and dead until of this flat, a mountain you have made. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thy no, soul! No, no, no. Hamlet, oh, gentlemen! Mm. I loved Ophelia. What will thou do for I would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself to come? I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine? Thou face me with leaping in her grave. Come, be buried quick with her, and so will I. What is the reason that you use me thus? I love you ever. Tis no matter. Hercules himself, do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. My revenge will come. There it is. Will you be ruled by me? Aye, my lord. You have been talked of in that Hamlet's hearing. For art and exercise in your defense, and for your rapier, was special. This reported Hamlet envenomed so deeply that he could nothing do but wish and beg your coming over so he could play with you. Now to the quick of the ulcer. We'll bring you together and wager on your heads. And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank so mortal that but dip a knife in it, where it draws blood, no cataplasm so rare can save a thing from death that is but scratched with all. This project should have a back or a second. In your motion, when you're hot and dry, and he calls for drink, I'll have made a chalice for the nods. We're on but sipping, for he, if by chance, escapes your venom stuck. Our purpose will hold there. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze. But that this folly drowns it. Fences rank. It smells to heaven. It had the primal elder's curse upon it. A brother's murder. Pray I cannot. Though inclination be as sharp as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man to double business bound, I stand and pause. Where shall I first begin, or both neglect? What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself in brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? What's in a prayer but this twofold force to be forestarted? Ere we come to fall or pardon being down. And I look up. My fault is past. But oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? 
Forgive me my foul murder! That cannot be, since I'm still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. In the corrupted currents of this world, offenses gilded hand may shove by justice, and after seeing that the wicked prize itself buys out the law. But it's not so above. There is no shuffling. What then? What rests? Try what repentance can, or what can it not? Yet what can it when one cannot repent? Oh, wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Oh, lineless soul, that's struggling to be free, art more engaged. Help, angels, make a say. Bow, stubborn knees, and heart with strings of steel be soft as sinews of the newborn baby. All may be well. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. My lord, the king hath wagered with Laertes that in a dozen passes between yourself and him he shall not exceed you three hits. Tis the breathing time of day with me, let the foils be brought. You will lose, my lord. <laughs> I do not think so. I shall win, the odds. But thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. This. List, O oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh God, revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder. Murder most foul, as in the best it is. But this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love may sweep to my revenge. I find the apt. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. And if it be not now, Yet it will come. The readiness is all. And since no man of aught he leaves knows, what is to leave betimes? Let be. Come, Hamlet. Come take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I have done you wrong. But pardon it? as you are a gentleman. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I am satisfied in nature, whose motive in this case should stir me most to my revenge. But in my terms of honor, I stand aloof and will no reconcilement. If Hamlet give first a second hit, a quit, an answer of the third exchange, the king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup, an union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings of Denmark's crown have worn. Come, begin. 
Come, sir. Come, my lord. Hit. Well, again. Stay. Give us drink. Have it. This pearl is thine. It is for your health. I'll play this bout first, set it by a while. <clears throat> Come. Again. A hit, a hit, what say you? A touch, a touch, I do confess it. Our son shall win. He's fat and scant of breath. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. There's the poison cup. But it's too late. Come, Laris, is for the third, you do but dally. Say you so. Come on! Ah! Have a thee now! Ah! 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 in the world can do thee good. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Thy mother's poison. I can no more. The king, the king is to blame. The point of venom too. Then venom. <laughs> Noble Hamlet, mine and my father's death fall not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it, I follow thee. I die, Regio. Wretched Queen, adieu. And I but time. This fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, all oh, I can tell you. Now let us report me and my cause of right to the unsatisfied. Go, God, Horatio! 
<laughs> what a wretched name. Big static thus unknown shall I leave behind me. If thou dost ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Oh! I did, Rachel. The potent poison quite all crows my spirit. The rest is silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing me to thy rest.